Hello, 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 and what is going on, everybody? I am Master of the TDS, and I'm drummed by my lovely wife... Riding Raven. And we're back for another episode of Psychosynopsis. Three topics from the past week, all summarized in one video for you to enjoy and consume at your leisure. You're welcome. Now let's get into it. No! God, please, no! 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 I would be honored if you would teach me. Even if I'm a girl? I'm sorry if I insulted you earlier. I was wrong. Nope. I really am the last airbender. Nope. <laughs> that wasn't a good play. I'll say. No kidding. Horrible. You said it. But the effects were decent. Netflix Avatar The Last Airbender adaptation is altering Sokka and Katara's characters, softening Sokka's sexism, and changing Katara due to gender issues, causing fan disagreement and concerns about the fidelity to the source material given the original creator's departure. Well, at least we now know why they left. I believe just like with One Piece, they are planning to drop this all at once on February 22nd on Netflix. Which is not that far away, but everything we have heard makes everyone who loves the original concerned because they're apparently shifting towards realism and are redirecting certain elements, but not the ones you bend. And wait for it, honey. It's not even just those elements. It's the fact that they're actually, and this is an actual quote. I was so shocked to hear this was an actual quote from the person in charge. You laughed. They literally want to get Game of Thrones fans. They literally made this so that they could say it's like the it's like Avatar, but it's also like Game of Thrones, so it can appeal to more than just children. You can't see, but I literally just smacked my forehead like Sokka does in that one episode with the stoner nomads. Literally, it, Avatar is not Game of Thrones. Why does everything have to be Game of Thrones? But wait, we get, it gets even worse. They've also come up with things, and this is just goes to show you that these people in charge of things should have like a moratorium on actors or anybody involved speaking about anything that's going on because it just makes things worse. We found out that not only are they going to change uh, Sokka, they're going to also change Katara as well, among a bunch of other things. Didn't you also find that they're going to be removing Toph? I've heard rumors of that. I do not know. So I don't know if that's for sure. I don't know if there was a lot of posts out there now of people saying this kind of stuff as jokes. So we don't really know. Well, if they do end up removing Toph, that will be their absolutely number one biggest mistake because one, she is their disability representation. And two, everyone loves Toph. Regardless of whether that's true or not. What we do know is they're taking away Sokka's sexism because it's a problem. Now, I hate using the term sexism because I think it's dumb, mm -hmm. but Sokka had some obviously developmental quirks where he wasn't very respectful or aware of women in a sense where he didn't look at the Kyoshi warriors as like warriors. He looked at them as women and he ended up learning his lesson. In that same episode, in fact. And he actually had character growth since then, and even and even stopped bullying his sister so much when she was going into her motherly roles. Even in the episode where you find out how their mother died, Sokka actually tells Zuko, when I think of our mom, it's Katara's face I see. I don't even remember my mom. Because Katara went into the mother role after their mother died. And Katara... Also, they're changing. They're actually removing some of that motherliness because of gender issues. Now, what gender issues? The gender issues being that they don't obviously like what Avatar is. They're trying to change it to cater to Game of Thrones fans and all this stuff. They're also apparently cutting out some parts with Aang going off on like adventures, side quests or whatever that were crucial to the story, but they're cutting it to make it more like a serialized drama. The problem here is... Avatar was never a serialized drama. If you wanted to make a serialized drama based off of Avatar, you could do that. But don't call it Avatar The Last Airbender, because it's not. It's really not. Not to mention they're also going to be showing the genocide of the Air Nation. 
and quite possibly the entire, the actual burning of Zuko's eye by his own father. But wait, honey. Sexism bad. Genocide good. We and, show genocide good on screen. Sexism and, bad. And uh, child abuse, apparently. Whatever. The point being is that maybe this will turn out to be good. I, we both doubt it. Absolutely doubt it. Like I said, this, now we know, now we know why the showrunners left. And because we know, we can't pretend to be ignorant. Now, if it turns out that it is not true or that things are not as bad and the show's actually good, we will mention that. Mm -hmm. But for now, we're hearing these things and it doesn't need to be this way. Netflix got too cocky after Netflix One Piece. And instead of letting these people in charge, they really should have gone out of their way to get back the original creators and listen to what they had to say, just like they did for One Piece. And because they're not going to do that, this is what we're going to get. Unfortunately. But at least we'll have, always have the original cartoon, which I really want to watch again now. Yeah, me too. If anything, that'll make people want to do that more. Indeed. But you didn't think it'd be me at the end. Hobbit! Are we done? your bad stand-up routine. Almost. But you always gotta end on your best joke. fans criticize Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League for its disrespectful and underwhelming portrayal of Batman's death by Harley Quinn, expressing disappointment and concerns about the game's approach to iconic superheroes. Seriously, why? I mean, mostly what people are upset about is the cutscene of Batman being killed point blank by Harley Quinn after she humiliates him. Now, to be fair, I have to say that this, this is, a lot of people know this by now, but to be fair, a lot of people are upset because this supposedly in this game was marketed as Kevin Conroy's last kind of portrayal of Batman, given unfortunately he passed away due to cancer. So a lot of people were already emotional because of that, and this was not what they were expecting, even in a game like this. I mean, it is called Kill the Justice League, so you expect them to be killing the Justice League. But it's the way they're killing the Justice League and what they're doing to their corpses after they kill them that has people so upset. Yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. But one thing I wanted to touch on before we go into that is that also there's a lot of pandering put into this. Like there's a sign at one point that's like with trans flags on it that says like, we accept all heroes. This is the Suicide Squad. They're not heroes. No, they're villains who are manipulated and coerced into working for the U.S. government with explosive chips in their heads. Regardless, one of the things that people are you know, talking about this game... Now, to be fair, as my wife said, yes, it is called Kill the Justice League. So there is going to be some of that. But people don't like the way they've done it. Now, let's talk about a couple different things. So we have the Batman thing, which is making people upset. But there's also another scene where they end up killing Flash and Captain Boomerang um, <clears throat> decides to pull out his... Um, <clears throat> decides to do his business on Flash's corpse. And they also made it very clear that they don't like Green Lantern, John Stewart, because they made him talk like he's a cop. And a very racist one is at that. John Stewart, before he was a Green Lantern, was a freaking U.S. Marine. Even... It doesn't matter what your skin color is and when you're, the, when you're in the Marines, you learn respect. Literally, it is one of the most respectful corps in the U.S. military. And they literally make him, like, call them convicts and throw out, like, slang like that so that they can kind of get away with killing him and they end up having him be, like, undressed and they have uh, King Shark wear his ring, doesn't which... Work, it doesn't work like that. Well, they don't seem to care. Mm. And then they also have where they prop up Wonder Woman over everybody else. Because Wonder Woman is a wonderful woman. And literally, they first off, I don't like the design of the character in this. I think that she looks very bad. Very. She's got too much armor. But to be fair, 
Uh, one of the things people are annoyed about is that the bios for the characters, one of them for her was written by Lex Luthor, who basically says if we had embraced the Amazon's culture uh, and dealt with things like, because they've dealt with things like toxic masculinity and all this kind of stuff, th <sighs> that's ridiculous. I'm sorry. This is a video game. Now, a lot of people are mentioning and bringing up the name Sweet Baby Inc., which is apparently something that have that comes into a lot of games with these kinds of things in it, which ever, which in the end ends up destroying every single game they have touched. Basically, they're like sensitivity readers, but for video games. So basically, they come in and they decide to change things and make them less problematic or whatever. So we can definitely see their influence here. Mm -hmm. But I think that we have to recognize that a lot of the reaction is probably coming from it being Kevin Conroy's Batman more than anything else. And that it's set in the Arkham universe, which also people don't like because they feel like this is the end of Arkham Batman. Now, whether they change that or not is not the point. I don't know. I haven't played the Arkham games, but I watched my brothers play a couple of the games and they are damn good games. And people are saying like they don't believe that this is Rocksteady, the same Rocksteady that gave them those games. And to be fair, I don't think it is. I don't either. It's definitely different. Now, some people may like the game and if you like it, that's totally cool. Mm hmm. But a lot of people have problems with how the way they're treating certain heroes, how they're being disrespectful. And even in a game called Kill the Justice League, you'd think that they'd at least have some little bit more class with some of these things. But it honestly seems like they don't really care. Realistically, there are villains who actually respect the heroes that they fight because there are certain traits about the heroes that they find admirable or honorable. They're not showing any of that anymore. I hate that. Unfortunately, they just, as I said, they don't seem to care, and because of that, they seem to prioritize the message and propping up characters and spitting on other characters just for the sake of it, and we really don't know why. Unfortunately. So, while my character in the movie may be able to see the future, I also can. And I know what the future brings. I know that when you see Madam Web, you're gonna love it. In fact, I think you're going to see it twice. Oh, who could have seen this coming? Whoa. Dakota Johnson's departure from talent agency WME to CAA days after the Madam Web trailer, coupled with rumors of her potential dissatisfaction, aligns with industry speculation about the Marvel film, which faces poor projections and online ridicule. We all saw that coming. Now, let's clarify, it's not a Marvel film, it's a Sony Marvel film, so we want to make that clear. A Marvel-adjacent film. Like we said, Dakota Johnson, who's playing Madam Web, the younger version, not the old crone who's blind and in a wheelchair, which it should have been. Would have gotten them diversity points if they did. Absolutely. But it's an old white woman, so they couldn't do that. Guess that's true. But basically, she literally left her talent agency because she felt, I guess, cheated? Now, we don't know this for certain, but she hinted at potential dissatisfaction in her SNL monologue, and... She also kind of like added, and a couple of her stars like added on Twitter the Marvel Studios account. And it's not the first time that we've heard of actors, or whatever, jumping into roles in the Marvel universe when it's technically the Sony Marvel universe. True, but from what we can speculate, it appears that she expected to be in an MCU movie, not a Marvel adjacent movie. So I would imagine that, yes, she feels slighted. And the funniest part also is that you'd think that they would have learned from the Marvels doing poorly. But Madam Web is actually reported projections for the box office are 56 to 101 million. And with the budget of Madam Web only being 80 million, that doesn't look very good. No, that minimum of what they're going to make is extremely low. And honestly, I'm surprised the budget wasn't higher. I, I'm not surprised to see this projection because it doesn't look good. It looks cheap. Now, one of the things that they've also mentioned is a lot of bait-and-switch tactics. What they do here, we've heard a rumor... That Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man was supposed to be in this movie, meaning it was going to be in his Spider-Man universe. And they kind of removed that 
for reasons and they made it separate. Now, whatever the reasons might be, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man would have actually been a reason for people to come to the movie, so cutting him out was probably not a good idea. It was probably the worst idea other than actually making this movie and making it look like CW trash. This movie just looks awful, and whether or not you like the characters or you, you want to support the movie doesn't matter. Just look at how it looks. Everybody's dunking on the quality. It looks like they got their, like, super suits at Party City. They look plastic. Or rubber. Like, cheap rubber. Like the ones, again, you can get at Party City or Spirit Halloween. Don't insult Spirit Halloween. Yeah, their costumes are probably higher quality than these ones. Of course, it's Spirit Halloween! But- Sponsor us! <laughs> Who's that? I want to be sponsored by Spirit Halloween. I doubt they're watching this video. Aww. This movie just doesn't look good, and you'd think that they'd learn. I'm really hoping this movie does badly. Now, we don't know if it will. Maybe, maybe something will happen. Maybe it'll turn out to be good. But Sony doesn't really have a good track record right now. True, and there are also two other movies coming out on the same day that are probably going to do better. Well, wait, we have to mention that Lisa Frankenstein's coming out not that long before that, so that's going to be interesting, too. That one looks so cringe, and I do not want to watch it at all. This looks awful. It doesn't look good. And because it doesn't look good, and because the characters aren't that well-known, it's just like they had to put out a thing like explaining what Madam Web's powers are, and this could have been a decent movie if it was in a Spider-Man movie. Why can't we have... I know that they have rights issues, but... Why can't we have Sony villain movies with Spider-Man? And why can't we have the characters that are supposed to be elderly women actually fulfill their roles as mentors to the younger characters? Agatha Harkness is supposed to be an elderly witch who is Scarlet Witch's mentor. Madam Web in the animated Spider-Man TV show back in the 90s was Spider-Man's mentor. She helped him in so many episodes. There's a lot of things about this movie that doesn't look, that don't look good, and a lot of people just don't even care about the characters, and so we're going to kind of continue to see this. We also have Craven the Hunter to look forward to this year. No. Yeah. No one likes this anymore, Sony. Get over it. Seriously, just stop. It, it, we don't need villains of Spider-Man without Spider-Man. Either give us Spider-Man with the villains or not at all. Please. What do you mean it didn't talk? You were in there for an hour. Just sat there counting the seconds until the session was over. Pretty impressive, actually. And now it is time for the diagnosis of the week. Where we diagnose the week with a mental illness. Because someone has to. And we have an interesting diagnosis for this week. Do tell. So the diagnosis for this week is echo chamber effect. Please explain. Now you may have heard of echo chamber before, but echo chamber effect refers to the reinforcements of one's beliefs and opinions by surrounding oneself with like-minded individuals or sources of information, thereby creating a situation where one's views are consistently echoed and rarely challenged. This phenomenon can contribute to a narrow perspective, reduced exposure to diverse opinions, and an increased likelihood of dismissing dissenting viewpoints. It was coined or gained prominence in discussions about information bubbles and ideological reinforcement, particularly in the context of social media and online communities. In relation to today's topics, with the Netflix Avatar show, there is a discernible pattern where the creators, situated at the helm of the project, exhibit a tendency to disregard fan sentiments, subscribing to a belief in their own superior understanding, thereby generating anger and discontent among the audience. With the Suicide Squad, the creators are in an echo chamber, dismissing fan criticisms and prioritizing pandering over story, which is contributing to a disconnect with the broader audience, resulting in poor decisions like how they kill Batman. And with Madam Web, the creators are not taking lessons from the Marvel's failure, persisting with Spider-Man spin-offs without Spider-Man, causing fan annoyance and resulting in low box office numbers. We see the echo chamber thrown around a lot. People say, oh, you're in your own echo chamber. And to be fair, it does happen on both sides. But we see a lot of times that these people in Hollywood in charge of movies live within these echo chambers. Their ideas are gold. And if you 
don't like them, you're the problem. They won't listen to the criticism or other viewpoints because they are not just in their own little area where they're correct, but everybody else is echoing back at them that they are correct. So they're not going to hear you. They're not going to hear anybody else but their own echoes. They're everybody who's repeating the exact same things that they are. And until this echo chamber effect is broken or stopped, we're going to continue to see these people lash out at fans and be this way because they simply will not hear anything but themselves. And that's why I feel this is a great diagnosis for this week. I agree. That is all we have for this week. Let us know what you think in the comments below and also make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe with notifications on so you do not miss your weekly therapy session. Or you will be charged. Gothic therapy. therapy.